Hi, my name is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this series of videos, I'm going to teach you how to program in Python uh, by building a Frogger arcade game application. When we get all done, you'll at least have a prototype for this arcade game and be able to extend it in whatever way you might want to. So to get things started, we're going to need to bring up what's called an IDE. In the prerequisites video, we installed the Wing 101 IDE along with Python 3 and Git. So it's assumed that those things are already installed. To start here, we're going to go up to the uh, magnifying glass and we're going to search for Wing 101. Um, and that's going to bring up a, a application on the system. You may want to just drag that down to the bar and drop it on the bar so that you've got it for later um, because we'll be using that in each of the lessons. So we're going to start up a Wing 101 here and um, when we start it up you'll be prompted to accept a license agreement. Just click OK there. It's free for educational use so you don't have to worry about any uh, paying for anything there. Um, and when it starts up, you're going to see two point something down here in the Python shell. And we're going to be using Python 3 in these uh, programming uh, examples that we will be looking at. So we need to change Wing so that it uses Python 3. If you go up to Edit and do Configure Python, it will bring up this kind of dialog box and what we're going to want to do is click on custom here and type in Python 3 to start up the Python 3 uh, interpreter instead of the Python 2 interpreter. On a Windows system um, you're going to want to, to bring up Wing, you're going to want to go to the program group and look for Wing 101 um, and then you may need to click the browse button here, you'll still need to do edit to configure Python and you may need to click the Browse button here to go to the C drive, look for Python on the C drive. It should be right at the root of the C drive. And then you may need to click Browse and find the python.exe file within that directory. Okay, so once you found it or typed it in here, click OK. And it's going to ask us, do we want to restart? And we're just going to say yes or restart. And we're going to get Python 3 running down here in the Python shell. So once you see Pyth once you see 3. Point something down here, um, you've got Python 3 running and you're successfully you've successfully configured uh, Wing to run this Python 3. Okay, the next step is for us to create a repository uh, or clone a repository off of GitHub. To do this, we're going to need to open a terminal window. So we're going to click that magnifying glass and type in terminal here. Okay, and under the terminal window, we're going to create a couple of directories. Now, I have done this already, but I'm going to show you how. So you type cd, and uh, that's going to take you to your home directory. So just press enter there. And then we're going to do a cd into documents after that. And that's going to take you into your documents folder. And we're going to make a directory called programming right in here. So you're going to type mkdir programming. Now mine already exists, but you're going to get a prompt back right away after you've done that. We got a capital P for that, if you note that. And then in the programming directory, we're going to cd into the programming directory. cd is change directory, so we're moving into the program directory from the uh, documents directory. Okay. So at this point, I've, I've uh, now gotten to the program directory and I'm ready to clone the repository off of GitHub. I'm going to do that with a git command. So you type git and then clone and it's going to be https colon slash slash github.com slash Kent D. Lee slash Frogger with a capital F. And it's going to go then out to GitHub and it's going to make a copy of uh, the Frogger code from GitHub there. Okay, so we've got everything um, set up at this point. I'm going to go up here and do, I'm going to click on the Wing IDE at this point and I'm going to go up and do File Open. And we're going to go to Documents just like where we were before. And in there we're going to go into programming and from programming into Frogger 
And from Frogger, we're going to open up draw.py. So you should see from Turtle import star once we've gotten this far. OK, so we're going to start writing our first uh, Python program here. And uh, to do that, to write a turtle graphics program, we're going to create a turtle. So we're going to say uh, turtle uh, equals turtle with a capital T. Notice that we have a capital T for the second turtle, small t for the first turtle. And notice the left pair and right pair in there. That is necessary after uh, many of the pieces of code we're going to write. So this, what we're doing in this line is we're creating a what's called a turtle object. So, and we're giving it a name. So the name is going to be turtle with a small t, and the turtle with a capital T is a turtle object. So here's the deal with turtles. Um, this is a, a, a turtle graphics was a, a package that was originally created to go along with a program called Logo. And it was, Logo was invented as kind of a fun way to learn uh, programming. And Turtle Graphics has to do with a turtle uh, that supposedly has come up out of the ocean and is running around on the beach. The idea is that the turtle is, as it's walking around on the beach, is dragging its tail and leaving uh, an imprint on the beach. Now, if you've ever been to the beach, you know that, to the ocean, you know that these turtles that come up out of the ocean leave tracks, but it's with their flippers, not with their tails. But we'll, we'll pretend it's, it's the uh, tails that are dragging around on the sand and leaving tracks. So if I tell my turtle to go forward, if I write turtle.forward um, and tell it to go forward, say, 100 steps, um, it's going to go forward 100 steps. Now, when I ran it, it ran, and then it disappeared right away. So. Actually, before this line, we're going to do a screen equals turtle dot get screen. OK. And then we'll do a turtle dot forward after that. And then at the end of this, we're going to do a turtle uh, screen dot exit on click. And you notice here I've got parentheses after each of these things here. So turtle dot forward and then screen.exit on click. And when we do that, when we run it, our program is going to cause the turtle to move along the beach and leave a trail behind it. That little triangle is our turtle. Um, and then it sits and waits for us to click. And as soon as we click, it's going to go away. OK, so there's lots of things we can do with turtles. And I want to show you now where you can go and get some information about this. So I'm going to bring up here. A, um, I'm going to go to github.com slash Kent D. Lee slash Frogger, that same address that we went to earlier. And under this, you're going to see some documentation. So you may want to just go ahead and, and bookmark this. You can add, um, add this as a bookmark if you would like to, and uh, um, because we'll probably be using it again. Um, in the future here. So I've already bookmarked it myself. So this is the, this is the web page that goes along with these, uh, with these uh, programming by example videos. And um, there is some documentation that's provided for the prerequisites. So if you haven't done that already, you will have to do this to follow the lessons. Um, and there's a video that goes along with installing the uh, prerequisites as well. Uh, once you have uh, done that, we've got our lessons. And I've got a link here for uh, Turtle Graphics documentation. So this is where we can find out about other things we can do with turtles. So there's lots of things that are possible with turtles. And here's a list of some of them. You can see forward is one of the first things that's in the list. And we just did that. You can make a turtle, turtle turn left or right. You can tell the turtle to go to a position on the screen. We can do. We will do some of that. You can tell the turtle to make a circle. You can tell. Um, you can ask the turtle what's its position on the screen. You can tell it that you want to begin and and begin filling a region of the screen. We'll use some of that as well. So lots of good documentation. If you click on any of this, it will take you to more documentation to show you and and some example code to show you what you, how you might use some of this as well. OK. So um, 
So we're going to come back here and we're going to uh, spend a little time here doing a few things. So I'm going to tell the turtle uh, now to um, turn right. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to turn right by 90 degrees. And um, if I read about the documentation, I could see I need the degrees there. And uh, turtle dot forward, and I'm going to tell it to go forward 100 again. And turtle uh, dot right, and we're going to tell it to go right by 90 degrees. And turtle dot forward, and 100 again. And turtle dot right. And you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to end up drawing a square when I'm all done. Do this one more time. Turtle dot forward 100 and uh, turtle dot right by 90 again. Okay, so when I run this, um, I draw a nice square on the screen there and I've uh, I've got that square. Now, um, I can tell the turtle to pick up its tail. So if I say turtle.pen up, it's actually called the pen instead of being a tail. So turtle.pen up tells it to pick up its tail. And then I can tell it to go to a spot on the screen. Turtle.go to, and I could say go to minus 200, uh, comma, 200 for example and if I run this then we'll watch it here there it draws picks up its tail and and moves to 200 and at that point I could tell it to put its tail down again so and that would be penned down okay so we've made it draw a square there's our square we made it move to a different part of the screen I'd like you to pause the video here and I'd like you to draw an equilateral triangle, a triangle with three sides and three equal angles. You give that a try, and, uh, and then we'll get back together and see how that might be done. But you give it a try first. Pause the video here. OK, so now you've tried drawing a triangle. I'm going to show you um, how I would go about that. If I want to draw a triangle, there's three sides to it. Um, and I know with a triangle that the interior angles of the triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Now when I turn left, I'm going to turn left on the exterior angle from a straight line. So if the interior angles add up to 180 degrees, I'm going to have 60 degrees for each angle. But if I'm going, if I'm heading on a straight line and turning left, I'm going to turn left 180 minus 60, so 120. So I'm going to go turtle dot forward. I'm going to draw a side first. We'll make it 100 long. But then when I turn left, I'm going to turn left by 120 degrees. And then I'm going to do turtle dot forward um, 100 again. And turtle dot left uh, 120. And then turtle dot forward. Uh, 100 again, and we'll do one more turtle dot left um, by 120. Okay, so when I run this, um, there I find out that I've got my triangle. Okay. All right, so I got a triangle and I got a square, um, but I can do other things than just move forward and turn left or right. I can actually do things with color as well. So, um, so if I do a turtle uh, dot color, I can specify the color of the lines that I'm going to draw. So maybe I want to color something red, OK? And after I do that, when I run it, I'll get my square, but then I get a nice red triangle. So that's the color that I'm going to draw with. There's also another color called fill color. So if I write turtle dot fill color, I can specify the color that I want that to be. Okay, so there's my black and white square. Um, and you can see inside the turtle it's blue right now, but I want to make the triangle fill in. Okay, so I will do here another command called begin underscore fill. Okay, and at the end of this, turtle.end underscore. 
fill. And when I do that, I'll get my black and white square, and then I fill in the triangle with the fill color that I have specified. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty interesting there. I've been able to do that. Um, I'd like you to pause the video at this point, and I want you to go back and draw the square with a different color um, as well. Let's fill the square in with some, some color of your choice. Um, you can use most colors. If you get an error, um, you'll find out uh, when you go to run it that you've got an error. So pause the video, fill in the square with some, some other color, and then start it up again so that we can look at it together. Okay, so you've hopefully gone back to the code that uh, drew the square and did something like this. You might have done uh, turtle.color and uh, maybe uh, picked some other color here for the outline color and maybe turtle.fill color and uh, pick some other color for the uh, fill color like pink for example. Okay. And um, and then you would have had to done a turtle dot begin underscore fill. Okay. And at the end of it we would have to do a turtle dot end underscore fill. Okay, and if I run this, um, there I get my green with my pink and my red with my blue. Okay, so I've got a couple different shapes drawn with some different colors here, and that looks pretty good. Um, I want to show you a few things now about, uh, about programming with uh, Wing and with Python here. Let's pick a different color. Let's pick something that's kind of obscure in fact, let's just pick something that's not even a color. We'll just put read in there instead, instead of red, for example. So when I go to run this, immediately it pops up some other code that I didn't write. This happens to be the turtle graphics code that I'm in. And if you look carefully at the top, you're going to see that I've got two different tabs open now. I've got turtle.py, but I have draw.py open as well. And I can click over here to see where things are. So there's where the error happened. But that came from there, which came from there, which came from here. And so I can click all the way through this list to find out where did the error come from. And here it's telling me at the bottom here, turtle.turtlegraphics error bad color string read. So read is not a valid color string. And this is called a runtime error that we're seeing here. So we're going to fix that with red right away here. But I'm going to accidentally delete that right pair in there as well. When I do, now that I've uh, uh, done something different and I had, this, uh, I had this error, I click the stop button right here to stop the program. And now I'm going to go ahead and run it again. There's another error now. This is called a syntax error, and it happened on this turtle.begin fill. It says it happened here. But typically with syntax errors, we're not going to find out about them until after the, the line after where they really occur. So with a syntax error here, the syntax error is really on this line where I missed the right parent. Syntax refers to the way the program's written, not the way it ran, but the way it's written. And I need a right parent there to uh, to make sure that I get this to, uh, to be syntactically correct. So once I've done that, then I get my code, my program to run the way I expect it to. Okay, so you've learned a couple things about syntax errors, you've learned a couple things about runtime errors, um, and uh, we've learned a little bit about uh, turtle graphics. So in the next lesson we're going to learn how to do things repetitively uh, which computers are really good at.